Hey, what is up mortals? It is me Dylan here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 4 of What if Izuku had a decay quirk? I just want to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. What are you all waiting for? There's no start in an actual villain fight! Go, go, go! Upon hearing this, Izuku took charge and began running at his full speed into the test arena. His mind was overwhelmed with panicked thoughts. Where am I going? Does anyone have a plan? What should I do? Izuku continued to run, and while he was looking around, panicky, what he saw down an alley between two buildings was a one-pointer robot. Internalizing his fear, he changed directions and ran down the alleyway towards the robot. The robot acknowledged Izuku's presence and began a wide swing of its metallic arm. Izuku jumped back to avoid its swing, and his thoughts got the better of him. Izuku slapped both sides of his face to regain concentration, and he put his attention back on his first robot. He watched a one-pointer robot take another slow swing at him, and he avoided it and ran past its arm, and Izuku placed his hand on the robot's body. The robot stopped attacking, and starting from where Izuku's hand made contact, it began to break apart and crumble into small pieces on the floor. All right! One point! I can do this! Izuku runs out of the alleyway and runs around the test arena with a newfound confidence. Dodging and touching robots to activate his quirk, he was efficient with his point collecting. With his several months of training on the beach, he was able to outrun many people who didn't have any speed quirks to reach any robots first and quickly decay them. His fighting skill wasn't much better than it used to be, so he would sometimes get hit by a robot every now and then, but he still managed. Izuku was proud of himself. After a while, he had managed to collect what felt like a good amount of points, 34 to be exact. He was starting to get exhausted with his constant running around, but he knew he couldn't stop now. He had no idea how many points he needed to get into the hero course. He had started to see people running past him, and while confused, he looked back where they were running from. Behind him, he saw a giant robot, taller than even the tallest skyscraper in the exam area, slowly turn the corner. Ah! Oh, what is that? To his shock, he saw the giant number zero labeled on its metallic body. Oh, that's the zero pointer? Why didn't they say this earlier? Izuku started running along with the other wannabe heroes when he began to hear someone cry out for help. He looks back and spots a girl with matching pink skin and pink hair and two yellow antennas partially stuck under a large piece of rubble, unable to free her legs. Izuku turns around instantly, running towards her with a plan already forming in his mind. If he could make it there fast enough, he could decay the rubble, preventing her from escaping and get away before the Zero Pointer runs them both over. Izuku ran to the girl and placed his hand on the rubble, and it began to decay away. So far so good, Izuku thought. But the Zero Pointer robot was getting closer. The rubble finally finished decaying after what felt like a century in Izuku's panicked mind. Run! Izuku yelled for her to run and follow him as he began running from the zero pointer once again. He looked back for the girl to see if she was also running, but she was slowly running. He spotted she was struggling to stand on her leg, let alone run fast enough to escape. Behind her, the zero pointer was getting closer. It was already too close for him to pick her up and run away, since he wouldn't be fast enough. Instead, Izuku ran back towards the pink-haired girl and ran past her. He slammed both his bare hands against the zero-point robot, and his quirk began to slowly take effect. Izuku already knew his quirk wouldn't work on something this big, but he wanted to try and slow it down. He couldn't take his hands off the robot or lose concentration, or his quirk for it to continue spreading out across the robot's track. Izuku's quirk was able to crumble less than half of the track, but it was enough. It was no longer able to move forward without the entire track. With the Zero Pointer unable to chase them, but still able to attack, Izuku grabbed the pink-haired girl and lifted her up. 
He began running away from the Zero Pointer, outside of its range, to attack them with its arms. Izuku soon reached where the others were, and saw the test was ending. He placed the girl down, now that she couldn't be attacked, by any robots in her injured condition. Thanks! It was really cool how you swooped in there, and saved me like that! Izuku was happy he was able to help someone, but realized that he had just picked up a girl and carried her all the way here, making him blush a bit. Uh, oh, it was no problem. Izuku smiled, with him being one step closer to his goal of being a hero. He looks down at his two hands he used his quirk with. Not long later, a short old woman arrived at the testing area and walked over to the pink-haired girl. The recovery girl kissed the girl's legs, and they began to heal from their injuries. After that, all the applicants were let out of the school, and Izuku went home and told his mother what had happened during the exam. She was of course proud and happy for him. Time passes as Izuku would check his mail every day, hoping to find a letter from UA for his results. After weeks of a grueling wait, Izuku checked his mailbox, and he found a fancy-looking letter placed in the mailbox. On it were the letters UA stamped on it. Izuku was starstruck to finally get his results. He immediately texted Bakugo this news to get a response seconds later. Reading Bakugo's text, it said for Izuku to wait until Bakugo got to Izuku's house before Izuku opened the letter. After a few minutes of excitedly waiting on his couch, Bakugo finally arrived with a similar letter in his hand. You'd better not have opened it before I got here! Wouldn't dream of it! Is that your UA letter as well, Kachan? Yeah. My mom wanted me to read it when I got it. Okay, sit down. We'll open them together. Bakugo sat down, and both of the boys opened their letters with excited expressions on their faces. A message started playing, and on both of their screens appeared All Might. They each watched their own message. I am here as a projection, young Midoriya. You passed the written exam with a great score, and your achievements in the physical exam were even greater. With 44 villain points that were enough to pass into a lower class. But this exam wasn't just scored on villain points alone. There were also rescue points. Saving that girl from the Zero Pointer robot earned you 35 rescue points. Totaling your score at an amazing 69 points. Celebrate, young Midoriya, as you passed, and are now going to be in class 1A in this upcoming school year. Izuku watched the message in complete happiness. He passed the entrance exam into UA. He was finally able to live his dream at UA. Izuku looked over at Bakugo who had just finished watching his message. Bakugo looked over when his message ended, to see an Izuku who was now tearing up with pure joy. You idiot! Why are you crying? We both passed! Izuku wiped away his tears, and smiled at what they both had accomplished. Before we get back to the video, I'd like to talk about our new channel, Celestia. Our channel dedicated to all things Dungeons and Dragons. Currently, we have a series breaking down the different spells in D&D. And soon we'll be starting some new series as well. So if you're a fan of D&D, or have an interest in learning about it, check it out. Additionally, if there is something you've always wanted to see get made into a video, head over there and leave a comment mentioning it. Now back to the video. A week passed, and the new school year began. Izuku, now wearing his new UA uniform that was sent in the mail, stood at the entrance of the school. He walked into the building and walked around the hallways until he was able to find his new classroom with a sign outside of it labeled 1A. Izuku opened the door to see that a few people had already arrived. He was able to recognize one person. The first person he recognized was his friend Bakugo, who already sat down while placing both his legs on his desk. Meanwhile, he was being scolded by a tall, blue-haired boy, who was violently swiping his hand up and down in a vertical motion. That is school property! You should respect it, and not place your shoes on it! 
Bakugo, however, was ignoring the tall boy and spotted Izuku from across the room. Took you long enough, Izuku. What? Did you get lost or something? Bakugo joked, but unknowingly Izuku had gotten lost in the hallways just prior to this. Izuku chuckled while scratching the back of his head. <laughs> I guess, Kachan. The blue-haired boy was already eyeing down Izuku, already assuming Izuku had bad intentions for being his delinquent friend. Izuku tried his best to ignore it and walked over to sit down near Bakugo. I finally remember where I recognize you from. Huh? Where do you know me from? Izuku searched through his mind trying to identify who this guy was, to no avail. You saved that girl during the entrance exams. You did great work back then. I'm ashamed of myself for not thinking to do the same. Uh, oh, you don't need to be ashamed. I'm sure if you were in my position, you would have done the same. I hope you're right. You aren't as bad as I assumed you would be. I am deeply sorry for making assumptions. There's really no need to apologize. It's fine. After a bit of talking, another student arrived. Both Izuku and Bakugo recognized her, as she was the brown-haired girl that helped Bakugo from tripping before the exams. Oh, it's you both! She quickly walked over to the two boys she recognized. I'm so glad to be in a class with some people I recognize. Hey, Gravity Girl. Hi! Nice to see you again. Uraraka sat down in front of Bakugo's desk and the three of them started talking as more students began to arrive. Student after student, people would walk into the doors of 1A and begin making friends with one another. Izuku was majorly left out of most of the friend making, as he was too shy, until a familiar pink-haired girl walked into the room and recognized him. <laughs> oh, it's you! Ashido ran over to Izuku's desk, scaring him from her sudden appearance in front of him. It's great to see you again. I hadn't gotten an opportunity to introduce myself back when you saved me. My name is Mina Ashido. N nice to meet you. I'm Izuku Midoriya. When you saved me, it looked really cool. You were running with a smile on your face to stop the zero pointer looked badass. Izuku was starting to blush from embarrassment as Ashido was talking loud enough for the entire class to hear. Although, internally, he was happy with himself. He didn't know what he was smiling. He didn't know he was smiling while saving her. It made him feel like he was a hero like All Might. Saving others with a smile on their face in the toughest of times. Izuku scratched the back of his head, being nervous. <laughs> Thanks! Izuku was interrupted when he heard a muffled voice speak up from in front of the classroom. <sighs> Are you all just going to talk all day, or can we get the class started? All the students looked around, confused, who said that, as they could not see anyone in front of the classroom. It was then a yellow-colored sleeping bag crawled out from behind the podium. Out the top popped out a face of a man who looked simultaneously tired and pissed off. Ah, great. I have everybody's attention. Now, sit down. Everyone followed his command and sat down in their preferred seats. He stood up and took off his sleeping bag and placed it behind the podium he stood behind. Let's get things moving. Everyone change into their gym uniforms and meet me at the training field A. Uraraka raised her hand and asked a question. Um, what about the opening ceremony? If we leave now, we will miss it. Aizawa shook his head in annoyance. You guys aren't children. You are now in the most prestigious school to become heroes. Not stand around and get a boring lecture when you could be training. Now, get a move on. I expect to see you all outside within 15 minutes. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank our patrons. BD Flames, Ethan Davis, Terry Chills, Shifter Meals, Adam Zetjo, 
XAV, Beto 3, Zill, and Joshua Phelps. Secondly, I'd also like to thank all of our YouTube members Toy Acosta, Rob the King, Sith Lord 906, CF2364, Ann Knuckles, Rimuo Tempest, Angel Juarez, Donald C. Stewart, Brian Greer, and Rafik135. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Fourthly, for those who are keeping track, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being is that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.